Hello, my name is Jan. I am uh, Envoy Senior Maintainer, a uh, software engineer on, on Google, uh, working on GCP platform, uh, core networking. I'm going to talk about uh, somewhat of an obscure subject today, uh, but it's nonetheless, it's very important if uh, your Envoy enforces some sort of security policies, like for instance, for example, an access control policy for requests. And specifically, it is the effect of uh, normalization of the URI path on the safety of the security policies. Uh, before we go any further, here's sort of like a bird's eye view on what happens within Umbway when it proxies a request. Request comes from downstream client, downstream endpoint. And the first step is service selection, where Envoy takes routing table and some requests of the pro uh, some properties of the request, and then determines the route uh, where the where requests have to go next. And uh, the second step, if it's configured, there's a policy application. And conceptually, it's the same same process where uh, Envoy looks at the list of policies, takes request properties, figures out which policy to apply, evaluates the policy. Depending on the result, it may reject the request or let it go through. And by far the most common request property uh, that is used for both service selection and policy application uh, is the uh, path component of the uh, request URL. Uh, its syntax is standardized in RFC 3986. Uh, that's the path, uh, that's the part that sort of sits after, right after the authority, or in this example, the host name, and goes either up to the end of the URL or up to the question mark or hashtag, depending on whether your request URL has query parameters or the, um, or the fragment. And it's just a series of seg segments uh, separated by forward slashes. Uh, representation should use seven bit ASCII characters and everything else outside of it should be percent encoded. Uh, it can contain dot and dot dot segments, uh, which sort of work similar to how they work in the file system uh, paths, and it also may contain parameters. And the reason I go into these details is to show that uh, conceptually a simple thing can actually have quite a bit of complexity. And in fact, you can look at two URLs that are visually very, very different, but in fact, may point to the same resource. And here where path normalization comes in, it's a transformation that uh, determines the canonical uh, form of the path, which intermediaries like Envoy used to, you know, compare paths for equivalence, which is very important when you, you know, when you want to find a policy or a service that corresponds to a specific path. And uh, it's, it's, it's a, you know, According to the standard, it's actually a fairly simple procedure. You know, all of the percent sequences are normalized. Uh, there are three steps there. All of the uh, percent sequences are normalized uh, to the uppercase. Then anything that doesn't need to be percent encoded is decoded, the so-called unreserved set. And if you look below down, you see that it's actually, you know, a fairly small subset of characters that are that is unreserved. And then there is a path segment normalization, you know, the dot and the dot sequences are collapsed, and the dot, dot sequence actually collapses also the previous segment. So the, you know, standard-based path normalization is relatively simple, but the problem is that the actual implementations are very often not standard compliant. They evolved over decades. There's a lot of craft in them. Uh, there's a lot of special cases. Uh, very often, it's also controlled through configuration. Uh, so determining what the origin or upstream service will actually do for path normalization is tricky. So here's just to kind of tie it all together, I'll give a quick example. Let's say we have a very simple policy uh, where all requests to the admin endpoint have to be, uh, to the admin prefix have to be authorized. Uh, you know, some sort of form of authorization, a token attached to your request or maybe a peer certificate and all other requests, you know, we're, we're just not even going to look at them. Doesn't matter, authorized or not authorized, they all go through. And here are some examples. So let's say a request to the admin slash change endpoint. 
and path normalization has no work to do here. It's unchanged. We find the prefix admin and request undergoes the authorization check. So then a little bit more complicated, you know, user dot dot admin. In this case, the standard compliant normalization takes out the dot dot in the previous segment, you know, produces admin uh, path, matches our prefix, and we check for authorization. And now here's where the sort of the rubber starts to meet the road. Uh, let's replace one of the forward slashes with its percent encoded form, uh, percent to F. This, if you remember, you know, from the previous slide, we only decode on reserve characters. Forward slash is not one of those. So the path normalization actually doesn't change the path at all. Uh, it doesn't match the admin prefix, and such request is going to go through. Now, the interesting question here, did we just create a sort of a trivial bypass of the security policy? And the answer is maybe. Uh, and it actually depends on what is your uh, upstream server or what's, what is your origin server. Uh, just, for, just as an example, I took, you know, we, we can take Apache, very common origin server, and uh, it depends on its configuration. If you, in your configuration, set, you know, specific option to either off or don't decode, uh, no problem. So request either going to be rejected or normalized the same path as Envoy. And uh, there is no policy bypass. However, if you configure Apache to decode percent, you know, percent encoded slashes, problem. Uh, um, uh, Apache will decode the forward slash, normalize path to admin, and the unauthorized request will be forwarded to the admin endpoint. Some more examples. That's actually a very, very small slice of what's possible. And uh, it's, you know, it really depends on the uh, different types of, you know, different types of backends. Go servers have, you know, their own set of possible bypasses. Uh, Node.js has its own. Um, and uh, actually the key takeaway that I wanted to sort of point out from this presentation is that there is no one hat, one hat fits all normalization that an intermediary can do. There is no one right way. Uh, even if we do uh, strictly standard compliant normalization, it's not enough, as you know, as I showed from the example. And the really the right way of doing that is if is to match path normalization on Envoy and path normalization on the origin upstream server. And in this case, you know for sure that your access control policy will be applied safely. Uh, as a sort of a little bit, you know, a little bit worse example, if Envoy performs a superset of path normalization than the origin server, then uh, at least you will know that your security policies will be safe, uh, but the service selection may end up being wrong, which is normally usually a much lesser evil. So for practical suggestions, um, you know, the best practical suggestion is know your origin server, the path normalization it performs, you know, what transformation it makes. Uh, that's, you know, sometimes it's very difficult. Sometimes you have a container that you pulled from the internet and it, you don't know what's inside it. Go, Java, uh, who knows? So there are some, I think, practical suggestions that can improve the security considerably. And the first one is actually just simply enabling uh, the option non way to do path normalization. The option is off by default. We're changing it in the future. We, you know, we realize this is not a very safe way to operate Envoy, uh, but it's very often overlooked. And uh, just turning this on factually enables uh, pretty much most of the standard compliant normalizations and just shrinks down the uh, attack surface quite considerably. Uh, the second is uh, to enable merging of the slashes. Uh, there is virtually no real world uh, systems that would, you know, that it would, that, that this option would break. Uh, I always recommend it's just a no brainer, also removes a very large attack surface. And the last one, the last option that I wanted to bring up is actually decoding how, how the percent to F sequences are treated. And the safest option is just simply to reject uh, those requests. This 
might not always work. There are some applications that actually, you know, use uh, use this feature and they encode their slashes for one reason or the other. Uh, and in this case, you have to be really careful. If you use access point uh, access policies, take a look at you know what paths they're applied to and what the backend service is doing. Uh, but this is really one of the more dangerous policies. So things that are uh, coming soon, I don't have a specific date, uh, but we are working on profiles for path normalizations where it might, where it would be, if you know the implementation and configuration options of your upstream, you can just enable it and not have to pick through what Node.js or Go do. So you, you can just turn this option on and Envoy will behave just like that backend service. And last but not least, uh, the problem that haven't been solved yet is what do you do in service meshes where your uh, backend services are heterogeneous and you may be running a mix of Apaches, Node.js, um, who knows what else. Uh, there's no solution for that right now. Unfortunately, we're working on this. Uh, contributions are always welcome. If you have ideas, come talk to me, speak to me or any maintainers on, on the Envoy. Uh, and that's it for me. Thank you so much.